let's check out kind of the source files that Juice gives you. So by default, you have all the library code um, associated with the Juice framework. And because it's a framework, it's basically just a bunch of code that a bunch of really smart people wrote that makes it easier for developers like us to use the framework or interact with the framework at a high level by just calling things like, you know, audio.process or slider.setColor. Whereas the framework has all of the low level implementations of how to make those things actually do something, right? So Juice made it really easy for us. You know, they're already capturing audio from the DAW for us. They're already um, doing all of these interactions with audio that we don't have to do, that we can just write DSP and do some cool stuff. So basically we have four files that Juice gives us by default to work with. The plugin processor and the plugin editor. Now, the plugin editor is all of the GUI based stuff. Um, so that's like, you know, the, the UI stuff like that. And then the plugin processor is all of the audio based stuff. So audio processing, your automatable parameters. So uh, it also has all of the parameters that you'd be able to see in your automation data in the DAW. And each one gets a header and a CPP file. Now, if you're coming from like, you know, JavaScript or something like that, usually there's one file type. It's just like, you know, a JS file or JSX, whatever you're doing. And C++ has two uh, file types, basically header and CPP. And a lot of times there's a lot of under the hood stuff that's different about CPP files and header files. But the way we interact with them kind of just you use the header to kind of define your variables and your functions to say what they are. So like, for example, we've got void get state information and you can see that we don't have brackets like this, you know, with code inside of it, we just have the definition of it. So in the CPP, we'll have the actual implementation. So if we look for get state information, if we go into the CPP, we scroll, I know where it is, but we scroll down, uh, get state, and this is the actual implementation. And this is an override function, right? So that means we can override it and put our own code in it. Uh, but yeah, so this is the actual implementation. That's where the code goes. And this is where you would actually um, store your parameters in memory. So let's go through all of the super important methods in the plugin processor. So up here, just like any other programming language, or I mean, I don't know about every single one, but we have the constructor. Uh, so right here, you can see we have the class name, which is stream juice intro, and then this implementation right here, which makes it the constructor. So we can put some stuff. Um, for example, if I make a variable called float um, gain, and I don't initialize it, I could come up to the constructor, put a comma, and I should be able to say gain, and it'll ask me what I want to set it to, and I could say 22 or whatever. So this is a normal constructor. You could use it this way if you wanted, or you could simply, you know, just set the value to what you wanted right here, which is perfectly fine. doesn't really matter, especially when you're starting out. So this is the destructor and it's called whenever the program shuts down. So you can use that to clean up any possible memory leaks, stuff like that. Um, let's see, get name. We can kind of ignore some of these. Some of these I don't really touch at all. Uh, if we scroll down, we'll get to the next super important one, which is prepare to play. So this function, it is guaranteed to be called before audio playback. And this happens in the DAW. So you can use this to do anything that you would need, any kind of processing or checks before audio starts playing. So um, channel configuration, set up your sample rate, stuff like that. Now you're guaranteed for this to call before audio playback, but you're not guaranteed a certain time or in a certain order with other methods. You can use this to do any pre playback stuff, but you can't always rely on it to, for example, we have another method set state, which whenever you have a plugin that you've already saved, like, let's say I opened logic and I had my plugin open and I changed some parameters on the plugin, I saved it and I shut down. Whenever I open logic again and my plugin comes up, this set state information pops up 
um, and, and it'll do whatever is in here. But you're not guaranteed that set state information is going to happen before or after prepare to play. So anything that relies on certain order, you probably shouldn't assume that it's going to happen in one of these methods. So like if you want to set your saved parameters to a value, you probably want to do it in both the prepare to play and the set state information. So that's kind of a long ramble about uh, something that might not necessarily be as important in the beginning, but it is something to think about. So we've got prepare to play. This is going to happen uh, before audio playback. And then kind of on the other side of that coin, we've got release resources. Whenever playback stops, this is going to be called. So you can do anything like, you know, um, any kind of reset, filter reset, stuff like that. We've got, uh, let me skip the process block real quick and go down the get state and set state. So get state. Um, this gets called whenever you save data in the DAW. So like if you have your your uh, DAW open and your plugin open, you change some parameters and you hit Command S to save. Uh, this will get called. So this is when you should save the parameters of your plugin. And then, like I said, whenever you open up the plugin again, uh, set state gets called. So this is where you're going to get the saved parameters and then set them uh, up into the plugin so that it, you know it recalls the values and has the correct values and lastly the most important part the process block this is where you have the audio buffer that's coming in from the DAW or the samples that are coming in from the DAW into this buffer and you also have this MIDI buffer um, I don't really do any MIDI stuff but the audio buffer is definitely the important part so what's happening in the process block this is a continuous loop that's being called um, during uh, playback and even whenever playback isn't happening sometimes in some certain uh, circumstances but what's happening is the process block is pulling in samples from the DAW in um, in block sizes so you know how in your DAW you can choose uh, a buffer size of you know 32 64 128 256 1024 whatever that's set to in the DAW is going to be the maximum size that this process block takes in and processes on so uh, one way to think about this is how often is this process block being called you might think that if the sample rate is 44,100 that this process block is being called 44,100 times a second actually being called uh, sample rate divided by block size times per second so if our sample rate is 44,100 uh, and our buffer size is 128, um, it's getting called 344 times. I'm not, I'm not 100% positive what happens whenever it's uh, a decimal or a float value. I assume it's just going to be called 344 times, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah, uh, so this process block is being called that many times, and this is where you have access to the buffer, and you can do, you know processing so we can read these comments i always delete these comments but um if this is the first time you're looking at this it's probably a good idea to go through it so comments are basically just text that you can write in your code that doesn't get compiled and has nothing to do with the actual execution of the program it's just a way for programmers to make notes basically so these comments are describing this for loop right here a for loop is just a way to execute a method multiple times or execute a block of code multiple times. So what is this saying? So uh, this is taking in total number of input channels and we're looping through however many there are. And I think most of the time there's like two, right? So this loop is gonna happen two times and we can see that we have this word clear right here. And even if you're not sure about, you know, even if you're a beginner and you're like, I have no idea what this line uh, means, we can see this word clear and we can just assume, okay, the buffer is being cleared, whatever. So let's read these comments. In case we have more outputs than inputs, this code clears any output channel that didn't contain input data because these aren't guaranteed to be empty. They may contain garbage. And we can see that um, where it says output channels right here, but it says input channels right here. Uh, so this is here to avoid people getting screaming feedback when they first compile a plugin, but obviously you don't need to keep this code if your algorithm always overwrites all the output 
channels. And in fact, I don't think I've ever removed this code before. I'll always just leave it in there. Let me get rid of the comments, clean that up a little bit. And you can see total number of input channels right here and total number of output channels right here is being referenced from right here. We've got input and output. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruising, where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the audio visual community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.